everything was shaking, I was dizzy. I've never seen an injury like that before. I couldn't talk, I couldn't answer. When I saw like how bad it was, that's when I got emotional. It was a scary moment for sure. Matt Zuccarello's journey to the NHL started here, in a small suburb just outside of Oslo, Norway. Growing up in Norway, NHL is not a goal. Uh, it's so far away. After the Olympics uh, 2010, my agent told me that there were some NHL teams and I never believed it until uh, uh, Glenn Sater called me. Uh, that's when it came up like, whoa, uh, might actually have a chance to be able to play. Uh, one game was my goal. Zuccarello played his first NHL game in December 2010. While establishing himself as a regular, he forged strong friendships with teammates, some of whom now wear a different uniform. As soon as I got traded there in New York, I, I clicked with him on and off the ice and uh, just a good person in general. He's a funny guy. He jokes around. He's on everyone, making fun of every single guy, especially when he feels comfortable. You know, you're going to get his best side. In 2014, Zuccarello became the first Norwegian to play in the Stanley Cup final. The following season, the Rangers faced the Penguins in the opening round of the playoffs. Try to get in front of the net, uh, and then boom, I was uh, gone. Watch this shot from the point. Hits him right in the head as he's battling for position in front of the net. He goes to the bench a little wobbly. We got back to the bench, and I think Brassard uh, looked at him, and he couldn't move his mouth. Everything was shaking. I was dizzy. It's kind of like a feeling that I never had before. When they tried to talk to me, um, I couldn't. I couldn't talk. I couldn't answer. The next thing I know is after the game, uh, one of the trainers like, "Oh, Matt's in the hospital. Like he's not doing well." They said it was it's pretty serious. He couldn't talk. So uh, it, it was a scary moment for sure. I fractured the skull and some blood that was in um, the brain. In my face, I had no feeling in my right side. Next day after, me and Carl, we went and see him. And our trainer at the time, Jim Ramsey, told us, like, maybe you're going to be, like, a little disturbed of seeing Matt. He was in one of those, I think, the level of the hospital where people with head trauma was. Everyone had, you know, uh, cables all over their, their body. And it, it was a scary moment. I remember um, Brass and Hagelin came to the hospital, and they saw me and try to talk and both of them just start crying. And then I start crying and <laughs> we were like three NHL hockey players, tough ones, I would say, uh, crying in the hospital. So that was, um, yeah, it's a special time for us like, uh, like that. He missed the Rangers' final 14 playoff games, but was ready to take the ice again at training camp. Though he led the Rangers in scoring the last two seasons, the effects of the fractured skull lingered for more than a year. Last year, like um, when we had a conversation, you can tell he wasn't fully recovered. A lot of times, uh, some of the hardest words for him, they wouldn't come out like the right way or it wasn't coming out like he wanted. I feel 100%, but uh, there's some parts that are less than 100%, but uh, doesn't bother me at all. For me, it was just a relief to see him back on the ice to see him do all the things he can do on the ice. He looked like the, the old Matsu girl. I'm just happy that uh, I was able to come back and, and play hockey. So there's, uh, I, I'm not complaining. 